Good morning, Year 5, and welcome to Thursday's English lesson. Um, now, over the last couple of days, you have been setting the scaffold for your own character description. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some really good examples of character descriptions that you show, don't tell really effectively, and that we might be able to borrow some really good ideas from. Now, normally, if we were in school, we would do this through a shared right today. Um, now, for obvious reasons, that's a little bit tricky. But what I'm going to do as part of your activity today is I'm going to show you a character that you're all going to have a go at writing a character description of. And hopefully, we might be able to piece together a sort of shared right that I can share with you at some point, whether it's on Friday or whether it is at the start of next week, taking the best bits from each of your bits of work so that I can give shout outs to people who are doing amazing work. So let's share the slides with you. Um, your starter activity is something that we have looked at mainly in reading schools. So um, I've got a text underneath that says, where did you go, mister? Sam shouted into the darkness, but the figure didn't reply. Um, what effect does the spelling have on our assumptions of Sam? So have a look at the way that Sam is speaking. How does that change the way that we think of Sam? Um, and why have we used those non-standard ways of spelling that? So have a think to yourself if you want to see if we can come up with some own ideas similar to that. OK, so um, when we see that sort of thing, we, we make a picture in our head of Sam. We get an idea of where Sam might be from. We can see that he says Mr. So he hasn't really pronounced the R on the end and that Y instead of U, which we wouldn't see in formal English. Um, so we can we can make a picture of what sort of character he is. And we can use that phonetic spelling quite effectively in speech to show information about our character. And that is another example of show, don't tell. And it's a really, really effective way of doing it. You will often see in some books um, F used instead of TH and things like that to show that characters are saying it as things instead of things, um, because that does make the reader have a judgment on the character that they are reading about. Um, so what we're going to do today is we've got four character descriptions. Each of them have got a picture associated with them. What I want you guys to do is I want you to read through them and I want you to decide what you like about it. So on each one, pause it and have a read through it. I'll read through it as well for you. And then on the next slide, what I've done is I've highlighted the things that I like about it. Now, a lot of what we do in writing is um, up to each individual about what they think is effective. There are, of course, some things that I'm looking for that I need to be able to tick off that you can do. But so much of writing, one person might love and one person might hate. So there's no such thing as a perfect piece of writing. So have a look at it. I'll read it out to you now. But if you're if you're comfortable reading it yourself, then pause the screen and have a look at what you like about it. She lifted her haughty chin, eyes closed in glory, lips parted in a mocking, triumphant smile. All that she had dreamt of had come true. And yet, at what cost? Certainly, it was not a cost that she would pay. Oh no, it was her enemies who would bear the burden. Her charcoal hair was coarse and straggled down her shoulders. On top, a dark hat sat, crowned with feathers taken from creatures she had defeated. She drank in the light of the moon. Tonight was hers. So pause the screen and have a think about what you really like about it. Okay, so I'll share what I really like about it. Um, there's some excellent vocabulary in there. The word haughty, which means sort of like smug, is a really, really good word to use. Eyes closed in glory, lips parted in a mocking, triumphant smile. If they're mocking and triumphant, that tells us that she's probably not a nice person. That mocking side of things gives us an idea that she might be a bully or certainly someone that makes fun of other people. Um, all that she had dreamt had come true and yet at what cost? So all she had dreamt had come true, that tells us that she's ambitious, that she's trying to get lots of things done. Um, certainly it was not a cost that she would pay. That tells us that she doesn't care about other people. She's not, as long as she gets to where she wants to go, she doesn't mind the impact it has on other people. Oh no, it was her enemies who would bear the burden. That bit and the creatures she has defeated gives us an idea that she's somebody who has enemies, who fights battles. Um, if you find out that someone has an enemy, normally you might make some assumptions about that sort of person. Her charcoal hair was coarse and straggled down her shoulders. That word charcoal tells us that her hair was dark and straggled tells us that it was long, but not necessarily clean, not tidy. Um, there's some really, really effective stuff in there. 
So let's have a look at the second one. Again, uh, pause it if you're happy reading it. If not, you can listen. Tara peered timidly round the brick wall. Her clothes a beautiful kaleidoscope of colour. Vivid beads in a jaunty red trim stood out on a background of emerald green. She watched as the other children laughed and shouted to one another. Her heart ached within her. She put out one foot, then swiftly retreated. She hung her head. Several gold earrings clung to the top of her ears as if worried they might slip off. Tara withdrew further behind the wall, but her sorrowful nut-brown eyes continued to linger on the hoard of jewels. So pause it, have a think, what do you really like about that? Okay, so let's have a look at some of the things that I liked. Um, peered timidly around the brick wall. So that tells us that she's shy, but it tells you that she's shy through her actions. It's a really good show, don't tell. Um, there is so much about her clothes there. There's a sentence and a half about the brightness of the colour, and then another thing further on about the gold earrings. And that, to me, is in contrast with her. She's wearing such bold, bright colours, yet she's such a shy, retiring person. That's a really clever way of showing that she wants to be extroverted. She wants to be able to come out and speak to those children because of the colours that she's wearing. But her personality, she can't quite manage it. She put one foot out and then swiftly retreated. So, again, we can see that she's shy, but she wants to be able to go and talk to them. And her sorrowful nut-brown eyes. Nut brown is a much nicer way of saying just brown. So it's a really good way of telling us about her eyes. And sorrowful tells us about her eyes, but also about her personality. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Um, same again, pause it if you're happy reading it. If not, you can listen to me. The bookshop, once vibrant with customers, was empty of life aside from its owner. Terry sat hunched in the semi-darkness amongst the many characters in their worlds which had brought such colour to his own. Trenches etched on his forehead told the story of his life. His body bent and sore, hair receding and thin. Terry was a relic, like his shop, no longer relevant to the modern world. He pulled his filthy fleece close around his shoulders. The collar of his checked shirt stuck out, a flash of colour out of place in such a dreary setting. His beard, patched and wiry, jutted out from his chin. Yet, despite the gloominess surrounding him, Terry was enveloped, enveloped in another world. In his aged hands, he held a friend, and, in his mind, he was not in a closed, failed bookstore, and he himself was not a frail, feeble man. He was off on an adventure in another world and was transformed himself. So pause it, have a look through it, see what you guys like, see what you think would be better. Okay, so the, the idea of the character being linked with the shop is really, really effective here. We can see that in both, both the character and the shop are both old, they're both almost decaying, decrepit. Um, and that is reflected in the adjective used. Um, many characters in their world which have brought such colour to his own, that tells us how much he loved reading, and possibly he didn't have a lot else going on in his life. Trenches etched on his forehead told the story of his life. That's referring to the wrinkles that he has on his forehead, but that hyperbole, calling them trenches instead of just wrinkles, really exaggerates them and really gives us an image in our head. Uh, there's lots of things about him seeming unkempt, uh, his filthy fleece, his beard patched and wiry. So we can tell that he might be older and he might not look after himself that well. Um, but we can also see his love of reading throughout this. So it tells us about the character and a bit about his personality too. Okay, we're going to look at one more and then you guys are going to have a go at writing about the character that we introduced on Tuesday with that picture at the start. Of the lesson. Um, so, uh, this guy looks pretty cool in my opinion. He stepped from the shadows, a menacing figure. Dark, greasy hair hung limply around his ears, and a wiry moustache sat above his thin lips. Hiding behind circular, shadowy glasses were cold, calculating eyes of frosted green. He concealed his deformed hand behind his back. In the other, he grasped his latest weapon acquired from one of his earlier victims. The green light emanating from the panel on the weapon gave his face a sickly glow in the increasing darkness. He stiffened as he heard the swish of a cloak. The time had come. Show yourself, he sneered, no louder than a whisper. So have a look at that, see what bits you like about that one as well. Okay, so I'll show you the bits that I really liked about it. Um, there's really good connotations here. So, dark, greasy hair hung limply. Now, if we were just to say that someone had dark hair, that wouldn't necessarily tell us that much about the character, but greasy hair and the fact it hangs limply 
suggests to us that it's negative, that it's not clean, that it's not nice. Uh, around his ears tells us that it's quite long. A wiry moustache sat above his thin lips as well. That gives us that uh, idea of what his face is like. Cold, calculating eyes of frosted green. Now, if we were to describe another character that had green eyes, we might be able to say that they were emerald green, or that they shone like emeralds. But they've gone with cold, calculating eyes of frosted green. All of those synonyms for cold might give us an idea of the um, character's personality. They suggest to us that he's not a nice person. Um, the fact that he has victims tells us that he probably is a bad guy. He's someone who's doing bad things to other people. Um, and later on, when he sneers, he doesn't whisper, or even though it says no, lo no louder than a whisper, he, they've used the word sneers. And that, again, gives us that idea that it's something negative. Um, so there's four really, really good examples. I would recommend going back through and having a look at all of them, because what I'd like you guys to have a go at is to write a bit of a paragraph introducing our character that we looked at on um, Tuesday. Um, if you send me those that you've done, then I will try to piece together a bit of a shared like using some examples from as many different people as possible. It might be that we have two or three. I'm hoping that I can share them with you probably on Monday, but maybe on Friday, depending on what the turnaround is with it. Um, but enjoy it, have fun with it. Use the four that we've looked at as really strong examples as well. And as always, if you've got any questions, then please feel free to drop me an email.